Hello, a very warm welcome to you on this Sunday, the 15th of August. It's good to be back with you. And uh, we are thinking today about a new series uh, looking at uh, Isaiah uh, 40 to 55. Today we'll be dealing with chapter 40. But before we get going, uh, just to say um, there is a church council meeting on Tuesday. So if you wouldn't mind praying for uh, the wisdom of, of God for the church council as they meet. Um, uh, apart from that, all, 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 most things are on hold for the summer period. Well, it's good to be together. And we begin with these words from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Let's pray. O Lord our God, shepherd of our souls, we praise and bless your holy name. Grant us the grace to, to desire you with our whole heart, so that desiring you we may seek and find you, and so finding you we may love you, and so loving you may hate those sins which separate us from you. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you and done evil in your sight. We turn away in sorrow. In your mercy, forgive us and cleanse us. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, the good news is that Christ has died and has taken away your sin. Yes, yours. Now walk in the freedom of his forgiveness. For his glory's sake we pray. Amen. And an offertory prayer for the gifts that uh, we have given either through our banks or through the envelope scheme. And I would encourage you, even if you can't be there at the moment, if you continue to give uh, so that we can continue uh, the, the different ministries that are exercised. So uh, please do continue your giving. And now we have our offertory prayer. Lord, we offer ourselves and all we have to you for the sake of your kingdom. Now bless these gifts and our lives that we may rejoice in your goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, our reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, uh, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, 
Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, our series for the summer is taken from Isaiah 40 to 55. And we're calling this series The Repair Shop. You know the programme where people bring in damaged or old items uh, and they often have a story to tell along with the item. And then the experts set about fixing the item and restoring it. Well, 500 years before Christ, an even more significant repair was taking place. That is the restoration of God's people, where tears of sorrow were turned to tears of joy. Now the prophet begins with words which sum up God's call to the exiles and his call to the church in this and every generation. Comfort, comfort my people. These words are a summons to gentleness, strength and hope. The word comfort is used in the Bible for words offered to grieving and broken people. We've all known what it's like to give and receive comfort. But comfort in the Bible is also used of God, describing his change of mind and heart out of compassion for the needy, for his people. John's Gospel uses the name the Comforter when referring to the Holy Spirit, the one who draws alongside us, who strengthens us, and who helps us to stand upright. Then we have Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which I quoted at the beginning. It also echoes this passage from Isaiah, reminding us how much comfort is at the heart of the nature of God and his gospel and therefore is at the heart of our calling as Christians. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. And Mark begins his Gospel with words here from Isaiah 40, words spoken by John the Baptist, who echoes this cry of Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, when the people of God first heard this message through Isaiah, they would have been encouraged that their time of exile was coming to an end that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. That would have reminded them of the presence of the Lord in the temple when God was with them before the exile. And yet here, there's something different. The glory here, the glory of God, is actually revealed in the desert, that place between Babylon and home. Now, what does all this mean? as we listen to Isaiah's words as followers of Jesus today. Well, we ourselves have received the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. We ourselves have received comfort from the Lord as part of a community of faith. And just as this first message was part of the repair process for the exiles in confusing and challenging times, so it is for us in these confusing and challenging times that we live in today. Our calling remains to be the people of God, a people who meet with God. And so often 
that meeting with God comes in desert places, those places of our lives which are difficult and painful. It's there that we learn to speak tenderly, just as God speaks tenderly to us. It's there that we learn to draw alongside others in their pain, because we ourselves have suffered pain. We draw alongside them because God has drawn alongside us. The comfort sometimes will be, as it were, putting an arm around someone's shoulder. Sometimes that comfort will be practical in nature as we continue to offer support to one another. The comfort may be something as simple as a smile, an encouraging word, a phone call, or even a brief note. Comfort my people, says your God. This message speaks of comfort, of healing and forgiveness. It is a message that prepares people's hearts for the coming of the Lord in the middle of the desert of difficulty. Today, many need hope, comfort, tenderness, and that may be the case with you also. But rather than simply looking inwards at the difficulties and struggles that you face and wondering how your life could be better, maybe rather you should be asking, what is the desert of my life that I'm going through now that God wants to use to create a future where there is hope and comfort? Let's pray. Gracious God, you bring hope when hope seems lost. You breathe new life in places of grief and devastation. Lord, be with those that we know, even ourselves as we listen. Be with those who need to know your presence your message of hope. And just as we pray for ourselves, we pray for the people of Afghanistan as they suffer civil war yet again. We also pray for the people of Southern Europe as they suffer extreme heat. Comfort all who've lost family and friends, homes and livelihoods, those who've lost trust and hope. Gracious God, we pray for all governments around the world, that they will uphold values of justice, mercy and love. And during this pandemic, we ask that you give them wisdom and courage to serve their people. We also pray for those who make major decisions about the climate emergency. Not only governments, but scientists as well. And all people through our actions. Give wisdom and courage to all in these times. And gracious God, we pray for all who have received exam results at this time. We do pray for our young people having to make difficult decisions about their future, for those deciding sixth form courses, and for those students making decisions on higher education or apprenticeships. And finally, Lord, we pray for our community of Bothorp, and our city of Norwich. Grant us a vision to see what can be achieved when we share the gospel and our lives with others. Increase our sense of purpose, that we may be aware of where and how you want us to serve you. Help us to walk in the light of your presence, and to answer your daily call to follow you and bring the comfort of the gospel to others. And all these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, keep us in your grace, that we may desire you more and more, and be examples of hope and comfort to all we meet, for your glory's sake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye now.